Tonight we are here at the Lincoln Center and we just watched the movie Suicide Room. You're watching here on a Latino show. So, I have to be here. What Junior supports Chris and David. La Vittoria. I'm actually a film programmer at the Polish Culture Institute in New York. So this series is a little bit of uh, my baby, mine, and of course the film societies and the Polish Film Institutes also. But it's a project that I've been working on for a year and I'm really excited because I love new Polish cinema. Do you like the turnaround tonight being in New York City where everything's happening out there? Yeah. There's a lot of people to show up. Yeah, there is definitely a lot of people. We would, of course, love more and more. And But this is the first time we're showing, really, the, 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 the most recent Polish cinema. So hopefully, if this becomes an annual series, we'll see more and more people because I think it's a really fresh and new proposition. It's a, it's a very indie, strong, controversial piece of cinema. So I think especially young people will enjoy it. I'm fine. I'm, bi I'm a bit nervous, but released right now. I have, I feel relief, you know. <laughs> the movie was fantastic. The movie was great. How the idea came out? It, it's we started off as a diploma movie, you know. We, we were trying to make a half of um, an hour movie that would uh, treat about um, a boy who locks himself in a room, and then we, then my producer. Uh, I didn't know he would be my producer then. Uh, showed, showed and he said, uh, give me a story, give me a story. Maybe you, you can have a young story, you know, young and fresh. And I told him about the story and he said, okay, let's make a movie. So we started to work on Suicide Room. Uh, I started to develop the movie. Um, I started to fill the movie with animation and with this video gaming. And I, tr I tried to um, have it more um, the whole the whole structure more developed in the process so it, it uh, lasted for two years before the shoot to create the whole suicide room world and this is your first production your first direction in the movie right yes this is my first movie <laughs> first it won't be the last <laughs> hopefully it won't be the last um, it, it, it was quite a big success in Poland. It helps in making the, the new movie. Uh, the, um, uh, the, in Poland, we had big audience, big big frequency of um, ticket buying and all that. Uh, it wasn't, you know, I wasn't expecting that kind of response from audience. It was really hot. The the, the reception was really, you know, it was the temperature was high. Um, it. People were discussing, debating after the movie about the movie and about uh, the problems it uh, um, it, it tells. Um, of course, the problems uh, between teenagers and their parents, uh, the role of internet in today's life, and all that. So it it kind of provoked discussion so it was the, it was really loud uh, in a way in Poland um, so I think Polish people needed that kind of uh, movie I wanted to also to uh, make with them uh, to go with the movie abroad so you think this will help the people in Poland or around the world the parents to pay yeah, more attention to the kids like a wake-up call to be more close to them yeah, I was thinking that maybe a wake-up call, but at first I wasn't mm, thinking about parents or teenagers. I was thinking more about people that, mm, um, that in in a way, it's just an example of 
relation, parent, kid relation, everyone has a parent, obviously, so everyone should understand it, that there are ups and downs, Some, sometimes it's, it's going to be harder when you are growing into, you have to, you know, mm, seek for your own individuality and all that, so um, I was thinking that this uh, particular um, relation would be as universal as possible to for everybody to understand, not only for teenagers or parents. Um, but of course, teenagers and parents are, are uh, happen. They happen to be the target of the movie. And why do you think that it was so very well acclaimed in Poland? Why? Why that reaction with the Polish people? Really, I don't know. I, I'm. I think that you know it. At some point, it maybe I touched something which was delicate in which you know there's there are taboos a bit nowadays of course in America everywhere there are taboos maybe the movie somehow touches one of the taboos uh, people wanted to talk about the taboos between themselves and they couldn't and suddenly the, this movie shows and shows up and they start to talk so it it helped them. The, um, the funny thing, and it, it made me think, and everyone, uh, every member of Suicide Room crew um, started to think about uh, the reception of the movie after we get to know the percentage of frequency of, of film goers. Uh, at first the percentage wasn't high, and it started to grow each weekend. So, so that's the proof people were kind of uh, talking to their friends and make them go and see the movie and watch it. So uh, we had, of course, uh, there was advertising and marketing before the movie, but this percentage growing, uh, the, you know, the movie um, uh, reception started to grow and grow and be bigger and bigger. Um, that made us think that maybe because of the problems in the movie people want everybody of, of their colleagues uh, or friends to see the movie. So maybe it's important for them. My name is Isabella Kiszka, I'm a head of international relations at the Polish Film Institute. And how do you like the film? Um, personally, I love the film, but the most important is that the audience in Poland loved the film as well because it got 800,000 uh, viewers, which is for the Polish conditions really amazing amount because usually you get up to 1 million to the uh, comedies. <laughs> which are very popular, uh, but the suicide room is much more uh, deep uh, and on the much more uh, important subject. So you think this subject is something that is growing worldwide? I think we've seen films like that in the United States, for example, but for our part of Europe, I mean Eastern or Central Europe, I think the subject is still new. The people who are living in virtual world instead of a real world, closing, uh, young teenagers closing them for their families and their parents. I think this is still new and I think that the part of the audience who saw the film, these are the parents of the children who are dealing with that subject at their homes. I'm 13. And did you see the movie? Yeah. What do you think about the movie? I thought it was really deep and intense, but I really liked it because, I mean, we've been talking about it a lot in school, and I, I really learned a lot from this movie, and I was able co to connect with it, and I, I really enjoyed it, though. It was, like, it was really good. You think it would help the parents to have more communication with the kids? I think so. I think parents can actually learn from this movie a little bit because, like, I don't know how to explain, but like, with, like, I, I guess they get a good look at teenagers and what teenagers can go through at the age of 18, and so it's really important. Also, I wanted, in Suicide Room, I wanted to show kind of um, a time of financial crisis where parents and adults have to work much more uh, they worked before because of the financial crisis. and. 
uh, which drags them more and more into workaholism, something like that. Um, it's really nice to be among the friends who love Polish cinema, and I hope that Polish film will be presented here more and more, and we will enjoy these beautiful films like the one we've seen today, and many we are uh, showing now by Polanski, Polish director at the moment. So, you know, we have retrospective. Uh, thank you so much. And I'm really touched that I was recognized. <laughs> thank you. Dzień dobry. Wyszła Pani z pokazu filmu Suicide Room, pokój, sala przestępców. Jakie są Pani uczucia, jakie jest Pani wrażenie? Bardzo, bardzo ciekawe, bardzo oryginalny projekt. Takie ciekawe połączenie również uważam dla, z perspektywy kina polskiego, połączonej animacji i filmu fabularnego i również ciekawe podejście do tematu, który właściwie dopiero się pewnie wyłania, to co wspomniał reżyser podczas Q&A czyli właśnie zafascynowania tego nowego pokolenia przez internet i, i zmiany sposobu, w jaki się komunikujemy i albo już nie umiemy się komunikować. W dosyć ciekawy sposób zostało to, to przedstawione. Co Pani myśli o grze aktorów? E, bardzo ciekawa, właśnie z koleżanką rozmawiałyśmy, bo byłyśmy zafascynowane e, młodym e, Jakubem, tak? Jakub, nie pamiętam nazwiska, e, otwórcą głównej roli. E, bardzo ciekawy, potrafi przyciągnąć uwagę, to znaczy to jest chyba taki, taka osoba, która, z której nie chce się bez oczu zdjąć. Nie chodzi tu o wygląd zewnętrzny, ale jakiś taki magnetyzm. W sposób jaki gra? W sposób gry i takiej ogólnej prezentacji na, na ekranie. This film is actually one of my favorite Polish films of like last two or three years. I think it's very deep and romantic, but at the same time it has a lot of layers and a lot of, you know, stylistic, um, you know, um, choices that I, I really appreciate. The animation combined with real life and the beautiful vis visual side to it, I think makes for a rich piece of uh, flick. Yeah. You think the American society will uh, acclaim the movie as well as the Polish society already did? Yeah, I hope that for the Americans it will be something different, something that they want to kind of go back to after seeing a mainstream Hollywood movie or something like that. So I think because it's universal and I think if we present a lot of universal films in the sense that the stories are such that anyone can relate to them, I think it will be a success. How do you like the film? Mam mieszane uczucia. Problem jest owszem ważny, ale wydaje mi się, że wszystko zostało potraktowane z pewnym takim udziecieniającym uproszczeniem. Wszystko się sprowadza do takiego czarno-białego schematu. Poza tym już jako osoba dosyć dojrzała nie bardzo rozumiem to, że trzeba uciekać od świata rzeczywistego, który jest światem nie takim, jakim sobie wyobrażamy i od ludzi, którzy się zachowują nie tak, jak się powinni zachować, w świat jakiś wydumany, sztuczny. A jeśli już ma być wydumany i sztuczny, dlaczego nie może być to książka, muzyka, traktat filozoficzny, wycieczka krajoznawcza, wypad do muzeum, tylko musi być to ucieczka w świat taki najprostszy, czyli komputerowy, kompletnie wymyślony. Więc mnie to dziwi, bo wydaje mi się, że to jest taka ucieczka najprostsza z możliwych i nic nie kosztująca w gruncie rzeczy. Niestety ja żyjemy w XXI wieku i w tym momencie młodzież ma dostęp do komputerów a bardzo łatwą, więc a, a, młodzi ludzie grają a, w gry, a, wchodzą w inter, na różne te czaty internetowe, więc a, myślę, że to dla nich to jest najprostsza rzecz i tak jak pan a, mówi, książki są odsuwane niestety w dal. Tak, ja wiem, więc w tym wypadku film jako taki obserwator tego, co jest, jest filmem dobrym. Natomiast jakby ogranicza się tylko do zaobserwowania, nie pogłębienia sprawy, moim zdaniem. I to jest słabsza jakby strona tego filmu. Poza tym te wszystkie sceny takie fantastyczne, one mają służyć temu, że mają być takim nawrotem do dziecięcej wyobraźni, ale wydają mi się już też takie przerysowane, uproszczone i są nużące. Czyli ogólnie ma pan mieszane uczucia? Mieszane uczucia, tak. Z szacunkiem dla reżysera, który podjął bardzo ważny temat. Tak sama pani podkreśla, że dzisiaj młodzież tak, a nie inaczej reaguje. 
ale z drugiej strony, że scenariusz jest dosyć schematyczny i problem nie został zgłębiony. Dziękuję panu bardzo za opinię. Okay, tonight we are here in Lower East Side, a fair New York City, and we are with Sasha, the marketing director. Sasha, how are you? I'm good, and how are you? Doing great. So tell me, what's happening tonight? Well, we just had a burlesque show. It was amazing. Um, teas, you know, strip teas, and uh, everybody tasted our food, which is delicious, and just enjoying the atmosphere, our ambience, the sultry lounge, you know, affair. Just everybody's having a fair tonight. So the restaurant is open at uh, what time they open? What, time, what, what kind of food do you guys sell here? We open for dinner as well as for lunch. We're actually opening for lunch tomorrow, starting tomorrow, Wednesday. And it's going to be from 12 p.m. to uh, 1 a.m., the hours of operation. But uh, lunch is going to be from 12 p.m. 12 p.m. to 5. And from 5 to uh, 12, we're going to have dinner. And you have with only one floor. How many floors do you have in here? We are by level lounge. We have den upstairs, which is where we are right now. And then candle lounge and the gold room downstairs. We have three big, amazing lounges where people can relax and enjoy, um, you know, a fair, have an affair. That's awesome. That's awesome that you guys have a DJ. Yeah, we have, uh, on Thursdays, we have DJ Prince performing and we have Lee Carl sometimes. And uh, we're about to see uh, the Burlesque DJ show. Kelly. This week we have two performers for you tonight. The best performers in New York City. I just saw a Burlesque show. How can I be in bad? Uh, yeah, my, uh, my cockles are warm. So what's exactly happening tonight? Uh, we are having our first annual um, event planner event, so we introduce event planners and local media to a fair, and uh, they come and check out the space. We give them a few cocktails, throw out some hors d'oeuvres, do a little chicken carving station, show them some entertainment, and uh, we get them hooked basically. And they come out here and uh, send us their business, and we all, you know. So uh, we consider ourselves ahead of the curve, not just with uh, our ambiance, but with our uh, amazing food. Uh, our, our cuisine is really the heart of our, our business and what we really have to offer the neighborhood and to New York City, which is a, uh, a very moderately priced French cuisine. And uh, we have the classics like steak au poivre and escargot, uh, frog legs and uh, mac and ch uh, truffle mac and cheese. And um, a, a, lot of, a lot of our dishes are becoming, quickly becoming popular favorites in the neighborhood. And uh, this is all helmed by our executive chef, Edgar Navarrete, who has been um, uh, cooking French food f uh, in Midtown Kitchens, actually, as well, for many years. Uh, and we are super proud of him, and we're super proud of what we got going on here. I always loved vintage musicals and um, Gene Kelly and all that kind of stuff, and couldn't not do it. <laughs> what about you? I've been doing it for about three and a half years, and I started as an actor and decided I like taking my clothes off more. <laughs> so you, when you came out there, this was the perfect uh, venue to, to the show, right? Oh yeah, it's so glamorous and it's kind of like smoky and mysterious and um, it's yeah, just super glamorous. Actually, the show was wonderful. The ladies were hot, they were sexy, and they gave a really classy performance of what burlesque should be about. You know, the burlesque show was really beautiful, and it was artistic, and it was cultural, and I got to tell you the truth, I got turned on. It was great. We got to see some booty and some cute titties, and they were very classy, though, and very graceful, great dancers. Fabulous. I have nothing negative to say. It was such a phenomenal show. The energy was right, the vibe, the people. It was, everyone was feeling good. The performance was excellent. I'm so happy to be here tonight. Unreal. For a Tuesday, unreal. This place is phenomenal. So was the performance. All righty. Tonight we have here Chris Grace in the house in Affair, New York City. Chris, how are you tonight? Doing well, thank you. How are you doing? Doing great. Thank you very much for coming to Affair. What brought you to Affair tonight? A good friend of mine, a guy named Seku, asked me to uh, sing some shows here. Uh, three Tuesdays in July, so I'm happy to do it. I'm having a good time. Oh, breathe easily. Oh, have everything. You won't have to hurt anymore. Oh, breathe easily. Oh, have everything. You won't have to hurt